a very old Stuart S50 steam plant. This is part 17 and it's all about preparing and priming the boiler casing. This Bassett Loke boiler casing is made up of four very substantial cast iron castings. And the first part of the job is to clean these castings thoroughly. I've already cleaned my teeth this morning so now I can use the electric toothbrush to clean the castings. You will notice that this liquid that I'm using evaporates very quickly and this is panel wipe or naphtha. I'm putting plenty on and not only is it cleaning off the dirt and grime, it's degreasing the part at the same time. A health and safety warning, it's a good idea when using solvents of any kind. Make sure that you do the job in a very well ventilated area. Luckily my workbench is very close to a wide open door which in turn is very close to a wide open garage door. So there's plenty of ventilation in my workshop. Whilst I was cleaning the boiler I noticed this. It's a hair stuck underneath the old paint. I'm removing this using a scalpel blade because I don't like to see hair underneath paint. And I don't want viewers writing in saying, are you aware that there's a hair under the paint? Yes I am and I've removed it. This part is the front panel of the boiler and it's very detailed. It's got really nice casting fire hole doors. I wish they still made boilers like this. I would definitely buy one. It's such a good quality item. The paint's fairly flaky, so I'm going to remove just the flaking paint. And for this job, I'm using a brass wire brush. This cuts through the old paint and removes any that's not firmly stuck down. I'm also using naphtha at the same time, which does two things. It degreases the parts and it stops the dust from flying about. This is a good clip. I accidentally left the toothbrush switched on, sat on the soundboard. So it's a bit like being at the dentist. In a previous painting of this boiler, some of the dirt was painted over and I was using the scriber to dislodge this. I want to start off with a fairly clean casting. So that's the two end parts done. Now it's time to work on the sides. It's been difficult making videos in the last two or three days because I went down to Norfolk for my youngest daughter's wedding and it was very enjoyable indeed. But now I'm back in the workshop. And in this clip I'm using some very coarse emery cloth because the top of the boiler is a bit rough, quite frankly. The simulated brick effect is okay, but this needs a bit of a rub over because the paint's rough as well. I'm showing quite a bit of this job at high speed because doing the job is boring enough. Watching playback is even worse. I do like to make sure that my tutorials are realistic and comprehensive so that any viewers get a good idea of what's involved before trying the job for real. I'm re-threading the holes 5BA and I'm going to use some long cheese head 5BA bolts which should be a good match for the originals. I'm also showing the threading operation at double speed. I don't recommend threading holes like this by hand at this speed. This cast iron threads beautifully but it's quite different to the modern cast iron that I work with. When I thread modern cast iron, it's normally a grey dust that comes away. This dust is perfectly black. This is a very small cheese head bolt that I may reuse. It holds the boiler in place. Time to screw it all together, ready for painting. And here are the cheese head bolts that I mentioned earlier, and they fit the boiler perfectly. I did consider removing all the paint from this boiler, but historically, as this paint is firmly stuck to the boiler, I didn't see the point in doing that. A while back, I bought a special tin of aerosol paint from Halfords. I only bought it to try because the description on the tin looked interesting. It said it improves adhesion of paint. You'll see it very shortly as soon as I've bolted the boiler back together. A bit about the colour of the boiler. This is sort of a terracotta colour, which is very similar to red oxide primer, but not quite. At this stage, before going any further, I thought it was a good idea to assemble the boiler. And from this clip, you get the idea of what it's going to look like when it's finished. The board's got a lot of holes in it, but that's not a problem because I'm putting a steel plate on top of that. And now, it's painting time. When repainting old parts, particularly over existing paint, you never know whether the paint is going to react. But the good news is, the paint I'm spraying onto the boiler is not reacting with the paint underneath. But then when I spray the red primer on, is the red primer going to react with this paint? We shall see. If anything like that happens, then I will take the boiler casing parts 
to the Steam Workshop because they have a shot blasting cabinet and with Simon's permission I will use that to take it back to bare metal. But it's looking good so far, I think it's going to be alright. It's most important not to get any runs or sags in the paint, so I'm using light coats and plenty of them. And this stuff dries fairly quickly, so by the time I've gone around one side and I start the other side, the first side is starting to dry, so I can rotate the boiler and give the other side another coat. So in case you're wondering, and I'm sure you're not, how did my daughter's wedding go? Well, it was very good. It was down in Norwich, and it was interesting. First of all, it was outside in a country garden. The weather was beautiful. The wedding ceremony was quite short and didn't drag on and get boring. There was the usual photograph session. Then two large coaches arrived to take everybody to this place where we all got on a boat and had a cruise around the Norfolk Broads for a couple of hours. All in all, a very enjoyable experience. The only thing that was a bit of a worry was on the top deck there was a small band, a three-piece. And I never really liked the idea of having a band on ship because it's probably tempting fate. Anyway, the boat didn't sink and the entire day went off very well and the journey home was good too. That's it from me for this episode. Time to let the paint dry for a while. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.